Hello, my name is Jeff Dembinski. I'm a senior systems engineer with the Source One team. I'm here to do a brief demonstration on EMC Discovery Manager. The version of Discovery Manager that I will be demonstrating today is version 7.1. Uh, it's in restricted availability as of October 2nd, 2013. Uh, so let's get started. So the Discovery Manager application is a client that is installed on the workstation of a eDiscovery user. The user uh, would probably be a paralegal, maybe someone from the HR department, uh, but the objective is to take the onus off of the IT department. Uh, the IT team would install this application for those users so that they could search for all of the information that's been brought into the archive. And that information could include email data, file systems data, SharePoint data, uh, anything that Source One has the ability to bring into the archive, Discovery Manager can now perform searches against it, uh, place that information on legal hold, and keep it in a separate retention area so that uh, it's not deleted until the legal case is completed. So the first thing that you'll notice is uh, that when I double clicked on the EMC Source One Discovery Manager application, uh, it has my current logged, it's taking my current Active Directory credentials and verifying that I do have access to this application and that I'm allowed to use it. When a user logs in, the first thing that they'll see here on the left hand side of the screen is all of the different legal matters that they currently have permissions to, to view, to perform investigation on, etc. So if there were no cases here, the first thing that we would need to do is to create a matter, a legal matter, for the person to start working on. Uh, let's just take a look here at the properties of a matter. So when we assign a matter, we assign it with a name. We assign a legal hold for folder to it. So what that does, uh, all of our information is in normally normal folders, folders that have a normal retention on them, whatever that retention might be, one year, three year, five year, etc. When we create a legal hold folder, we don't assign any retention to that folder. So what happens is Source One takes a legal hold copy of that particular item from its normal retention, uh, it makes a copy of it, a legal hold copy, a separate copy, uh, and places it in the legal hold folder. Therefore, the item in its original retention folder will still go through its normal disposition, but anything that's been placed on legal hold and been copied into that folder, it remains in, in that legal hold folder until the actual case has been disposed or deleted. Okay, So the, the, the information stays there indefinitely. So we have the case as a status of open right now. That's just a, that's something that the compliance officer or the legal officer could use to, to keep track of the cases. So we can have a bunch of matters in here and know by looking at the properties of the matter whether the case is currently open uh, or whether it's closed and we're not adding any additional information to it. User management, what this user management is right here is these are the users in my organization that I have assigned to this matter. These three users, Brad Cope, Debbie Discovery, and Barbara Moore, they have the ability to perform searches. Uh, they're investigators and matter managers. They can perform searches and they can add information to this matter. Okay? This information comes from the available pool of users within the Discovery Manager application. So let's say you only have five people in your entire organization that are allowed uh, to use Discovery Manager. When you go to add a user, you would only have the list of those five people that are allowed to perform uh, investigative searches. The search folders. These are the folders that you would see inside your Source One environment, right? So if I were to open up my Source One admin console right now, these are the, the folders that I have and that I'm putting data into those folders with different types of retention. Uh, we have an index only, a legal hold folder, personal archives, SharePoint data, exchange email, file systems data, etc. Whatever folders that you've created in Source One, you can select and make them eligible for searches for this particular legal matter. Dates. We can assign a suggested date range for the collection. Maybe the legal team has come to you and said that we need all of the information for Jeff Dembinski on or after uh, December 1st of 2000, uh, 2012. You could put this here in the case so that the investigators working on the case would know that those are the date ranges that they're supposed to collect against. Tags. So by default, there's uh, five different tags that Discovery Manager has installed with it. Those are the tags here that have descriptions already. Uh, bookmarks, junk mail, non-responsive, company confidential, uh, or responsive information. So as you begin to search for information, once you review the information, you can mark them with these tags. 
so you can create matter specific tags. Custodians. Custodians are the people that are involved in the legal matter. These are typically the people whose email you would be searching against. And then keywords. Here we can put a suggested collection keyword range uh, or keywords to use. So for this example, we have Enron, Skilling, and Media. So every time I start a new search, it'll automatically put these three keywords in the keyword field. I don't have to use those keywords. I can delete them later uh, and put different keywords if I want or put different criteria. But uh, it's, it's good if you know that you're going to have 50 custodians and they all need date ranges searched and specific keywords searched. That way, every time you create the search, it automatically populates those fields to you. So that's how we set up a matter. Once we've set up the matter, what we really need to do now is begin performing our searches. So let's get started. Our searches are all tracked under the collection area. When I click on the collection area, this is the list of all of the searches that I've performed for this investigation. Uh, if I wanted to create a brand new search, I would just right click collection area, choose new search, and then I would name the search. When the search first populates, it uses the default information that we put into the matter. So the default keyword list that we created is listed right here. But as I had stated, I don't have to use these keywords if I don't want to. I can add different criteria. I could add a sender or recipient or use a single field called sender or recipient and look for all of the emails from a particular person. So I just did a search against the exchange address book. I found this person, clicked OK. So now it's going to do uh, a search for all of the emails with these three keywords in it that belong to Jeff Dembinski. And I would click Find. And you'll see that the search is waiting. That's in a waiting state. Uh, it's going to start when the source one resources are available for it. It's now queued. The servers know it's available. And eventually, the search will begin executing. So I can run the search multiple times. Like for instance, I'm running it today on October 2nd. Maybe I need to run this search over and over for this person because he's on legal hold and I want to capture any new information that comes in next week. Well, rather than have to redo the search, all I would have to do is right click on this search and click start and it would run the search again with the same exact criteria that were already listed in the original search. It's now just going to show me any of the new information that came in since the last time the search was run. Uh, so for that particular search, it didn't return any results. But uh, if I take a look at maybe this domain search, for example, uh, it was only run once. Let's find one that was run multiple times. One of these searches here, here we go. So for instance, this EMC data search, here's the criteria. It used these keywords right here. Uh, and when I have this top level folder clicked, it's showing me the entire result set for all of the instances of when the search was run. When I ran the search the first time at 12.14 on 7.30, it found three items. I ran it again at 12.41. It did not find any additional items. No new result sets were found. So each time you run the search, it reports on the new results. And to see the total result set, you just click on the top level search. When you find information or when it's actually found, um, you see that some of these say assigned on hold. But the actual state that it comes back in originally is an unassigned state. That means, yes, it's a hit against your search criteria, but just because it hit doesn't mean we're going to place it on legal hold. So now that we've previewed the message, you can see here I'm previewing the body of the message. I can look at it. If I want to see the message in its original format, I could double click it. It will open it up in Microsoft Outlook. Uh, here, this one has an attachment. I can click on the attachments and determine if this information needs to be placed on legal hold. Right. So what I could do is I could um, select all of these message with control A and now right click and choose to assign the results to the matter. And it's at this point that the information is actually being placed on legal hold where we're copying it out of the original retention folder, placing a copy, a legal hold copy in the special legal hold folder so that it will not be deleted until somebody comes in and deletes this actual investigation. So now we found information, we've identified it, we've assigned it to legal, ma uh, to legal hold so now we can do some additional culling. All of the information that's assigned to legal hold goes to this matter review area under this all items. And here you could create new sub searches and do sub searches for additional information uh, and break down the result set even more. You can begin tagging information with those tags that we created in the property. You can begin assigning custodians to the messages, etc. And you see that all of this information, like I said, is already on legal hold. Um, maybe you come across a message and eventually determine that it doesn't need to be placed on legal hold. That originally, uh, its original reasoning for being placed on hold was incorrect. So we could choose to right click the message and remove the result sets from the matter. And that will delete that particular message from the legal hold matter.
Now, if you need to provide all of this information to a third party that's requested it, you typically have to export it. So we can do a control A on all of this information that's on legal hold, right click it and choose export. And we have different types of exports that we can do. We can export in PST format, NSF format. We can export files from SharePoint or file systems uh, into the EDRM L XM, EDRM XML 1.2 format. Uh, we have the ability to define the location where to do the export, what metadata we want to export with it, a TSV or a CSV file. Uh, we can schedule the export to occur at a future date instead of right now if we wanted to. We can also split the file sizes. So maybe we know we're exporting a large amount of data. Uh, maybe we need to export it in CD format. So we split the exports into 650 megabytes. We can split up all the exports based on the custodians we want if we wanted to. We can include the tag information that we listed on all of those messages. And we can limit the row count on the TSV or CSV files that are exporting with it as well to provide that additional information about the export. So once we perform an export, just like the searches, it's tracking each and every time we've exported some you know, form of data from this particular matter. In this export, I only exported 106 items. This is where I exported the data to. If I click on that, that hyperlink opens with the exported information. Uh, this particular export type, we did it in a native container format, okay? Which means that it knew that some of it was email, which is why this PST is listed here. And it knew that some of it was file systems data, so it just gave us the files for the file system data right there. Okay? There's some other important information in this export report. It gives us the fact that uh, all the information was exported, submitted 106, expected 106, succeeded with 106, two output files and the total size of those files. The export was complete. If I expand additional information, it tells me who ran the export, it tells me the item counts, etc. So if there were any errors, you would know it. For, the, for instance, with this export, uh, some of the items made it, some of them didn't. And here's the list of the failures. Uh, so I could choose to do another export with these failures. Uh, control A, maybe I have to export it in two separate data now. I can retry the failed items instead of having to go through and look at it and find out which items failed. I just come here to the failed items and retry failed items to get the export to finish. Okay, and just like we have an export report, we also have a matter summary report, which gives us an overall uh, look at the matter what we did to collect the information, who helped us collect the information, and different statistics about that data as it was collected. Uh, this is something you might also want to provide to the third party so you can show them that you did do your due, di due, di due diligence and that uh, everything you could do to, to provide the data has been done. Statistics about the information, uh, the custodians, the number of messages involved, how many times you assigned a message to a particular custodian or used a particular tag, and then the status of the overall collection search. So that's the basics of Discovery Manager. For uh, additional information about identity management or other Discovery Manager features, uh, please see the list of other demonstrations that are available. Thank you.